Namaskar. Welcome to the next session on Establish a Healthy Foundation. Today, we are going to do standing exercises, okay? I'll try to do as many as possible. <laughs> Let's uh, do some warm-ups. I'm going to just expand the legs. Inhaling. Exhaling. Hands. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. Doesn't matter, just don't hold your breath. Inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, and exhaling. And we back. Just expand, extend a little bit to the front, and stay for a while. Just allow the stretch of the back of your legs. And then go back to the left side and stay for a while on this side. You feel the working out on your muscles and twist a little bit to the left. We're going to do standing exercises, so um, standing asanas. So that will, I'm going to do a little bit of warm up. Some mobility so you're easy for you to get into the poses. If you love a stretch on from the hip area. Right, probably even to the front of your thigh. Just stay. If you find it's difficult, you can just lower the knees down, otherwise just stay for a while. You feel the stretch also on your upper part, on your torso. And also on your wrist. And let's go to the other side. Then twisting to the right. Stay for a while. Now the knees can come down if you need to. I'll just leave the knees up. And feel that extending up to your torso, your wrist, as you stay in the isometric position. And if you like, twist a little bit of the neck. for a bit more. Coming up. And move to the center. It's hanging. Let go and hang for a while. Engage your abs as you breathe out. And breathe in. If it's a bit difficult, bend the knees slightly otherwise. I'm just allowing that movement in the back of your legs. Oozing out very slowly. Relax, hanging. Like an elephant. Again, keep back straight and, and then again to one side, probably the left side, and release that lower leg down into stretching your glutes and bum. Keep the back straight if you like, or maybe hunch a little bit if you need to, to contract the muscles on your, on your abs. To move the leg away or nearer to the body to find the edge that, uh, that is 
giving you the um, movement in your in your thighs in your bum. One of the standing asanas, Garudasana, will be involving a lot of the hip tissue, so really nice to give it a little bit warm up in that area. But anyhow, the entire body will be stretched in any movement that you do. Do the neck if you like to give a little bit. Or keeping it up. Coming up. Just lifting the body up, giving a little bit of expansion, moving the sternum away from the pelvic. Get ready the back leg and the toes pointed slowly out of the pose. Stay in this plank for a bit and each swap leg. We're not going to the other side, we'll stay in this side. So it does not matter whether you're on the left or right side. So just do the other leg. Again, you place your leg closer to the body, away from the body. Let's go down on your elbows. It can be quite such a relief, this stretch. Just a little bit more. Let's move the sternum away from the pelvic. Just give me a little bit of a stretch in the front of the abdomen, of the torso. Just from here and changing leg. Change side. Two more time. Center and elephant and slowly gathering Coming up very slowly. Exhaling here. Exhale. One more time. Inhaling, lengthening, stretching, exhaling. Legs together. Hands. 
Let's do a little bit of preparation for your upper body before you get into the standing poses. Lean. Time. Here. Exhaling. Lean. Exhaling. Inhale. Turning to the left. Inhaling up. Lifting. Exhaling to the right. Inhale. Exhaling. Left. Inhale. Exhaling. Right. One more time. One more set. Inhaling. Exhaling. Left. Inhale. Exhaling. Right. Inhaling. Exhale back to the center. Inhale. Stretching on your toes. And releasing. Now, they're all standing poses today. So let's do a little bit of the knees. Now this can be very straining on the knees, so be very, very careful. Just lifting the right leg up. Bending the right left knee a little bit. And you can lift high if you can. But when you go up and down, be careful that you don't, if you feel a sharp pain, pull, release it. So just go where you're comfortable. Let me extend the right leg if you want to. And slowly release. The other side. You can try it slowly, lifting the left leg up, right leg bend, straighten the right left leg if it's possible. And slowly for a while. We have done one of these in the other videos. A little bit bending, something like that. Now let's do the pose. We're going to do the balance pose, Tula Dandasana. First you stand in parallel, leg a parallel together. You're going to balance on your left leg. So we start with the left leg um, and then lifting the right leg straight parallel to the floor. And the arms, it's on, the, on your waist. Most important is to focus on one point. So it's easy for you to balance. You can stay up to 30 seconds or less. Let's try. Lifting the right leg up. Like to your knees are not locked. It's probably very hard to see if you are standing uh, parallel or not. So someone may need to tell you, or if you have a mirror, it tells. It can tell you, but don't worry so much about that. Roughly, you're able to get into the balanced position. Sometimes one leg is easier than the other, which is quite natural. So, it's of course easier to balance when you are on a firm floor than a, than a soft mat. I try not to lock the knee. And slowly come out of the pose. 
Ähm, you may want to use a firm floor if it's difficult to balance. Floor is uneven. Okay, let's try again. Bend the knees, straighten the knees, and try different ways to keep steady in the pose. We are very trying. It's a balanced pose, so it also affects the nerves of the legs. It strengthens the nerves of the legs. At the same time, um, it also strengthens the muscles too. Or at the same time, it balances. It gives a form of calmness and balance to the mind because you have to focus to stay in one point. And my right leg is a little bit dodgy, so you find that I'm coping to balance. When you have some injury, it may cause some pain. So my knee is slightly bent to to counter effect the to to balance the leg. So if you don't lock the knee, it may be a bit easier to stay in that steady position. You can do up to four rounds, but I'm going to do another just three rounds of this. The duration depends on how long you can stay. 30 seconds is good or less is perfectly fine. Let's try one more time. It might trigger off. Um, Again, when you have some inflammation or dodgy parts of your joints, it might be a struggle to balance. But when done properly, gradually, you can strengthen the nerves, the muscles. Not only the legs, you do engage your abs, your core muscles, when you get into this. So, you, it's quite balancing for the overall body. And the other side. See, I'm lowering my leg so I could manage with the balance. Of course, you could have something in front of you, like a chair, to support while you're doing it in between. It might be very helpful for that. So, that's just 10. I'm not going to Shavasana. You may, if you like. I'm just going to stand before I go into the next pose. And feel the difference in your legs. It also contributes to your abs, your breath, your mind. The after effects is really very nice. Let's do the next pose. Um, 
is also a standing pose, Bhavasana. Bhavasana really helps to uh, improve your, your meditation, your bhava, your ideation. At the same time, this asana is actually very, it makes you rational, uh, it gives you a balance in your outlook in life. Um, interesting, it, because it also balances these, uh, you know, uh, this uh, get, um, uh, function that we have, this organ that we have in the ear. So, um, because of the concentration, the focus, the focus is, you're actually focusing on your third eye. So you can see my eyes are squinted. You are, I'm focusing on my third eye at, while doing this pose. Um, the toes are pointing out to the other side, but if you can move all the way to the, uh, to the side, it's perfectly fine, just at a certain angle, okay? But be very careful when you get in and out of the pose because it can strain the knee very much. All the standing asanas can strain the knees very much. So just be aware of how you get into the pose. Do not push yourself too much if that's um, too straining on the knees. Okay, so direct the knees to the side. So you're in a, uh, like, a squ like sitting, squatting. Then con uh, concentrate on your trikuti, palms in the muska position. About eight seconds or so. And then bring your arms your, to the right side. Bring your arms, straighten the right arm to the right side. The left arm is in front, pressing to the body. But your eyes are still on the third eye. Concentrating on that. Your legs are engaged in that squatting position. And then bring the arms to the left side. and then bring the arms in the namaska position at the back. Now, this is the tricky part. Maybe you might can put your arms, just you could just hold the elbow like this, or you could direct the namaska downwards. But the whole idea is to have the namaska in, in the namaska position like this at the back. Or concentrating on your third eye. And very slowly release the arms and then the legs. Be careful, this is the part where a lot of uh, straining of the knee happens. Release your eyes. I'm gonna do one more time, okay? It's a really nice pose to do. Let's probably do three. Okay, we get into the pose of this position. Your arms are in this position. When it's at the back, it is in this position. But if it's training, just hold the elbows together. It's perfectly fine. Okay? Um, it may be very straining on the legs, strengthen the muscles of the legs for sure. But again, get into it very slowly. And then put the palms together in the muscular position. And then right and then left. I'm not doing mirror image, so it's your right side and then your left side. Focus on the trikuti, palms together. And to the right. To the left. And back. And release. Now, I want to continue the next one, so I'll continue. 
you can come out of the pose or you can continue concentrating again the third eye same to the right left and back and release eyes release your legs very slowly over back so you can come out of the pose or you could continue. It can be done four times. I'm going to do four times because it's really very powerful uh, asana, especially for the mind and rationality and balance, uh, balancing the overall well-being. Okay. Then watch your knees, palms, eyes, focus in the third eye. This is the last round. To the right. To the left. And to the back. And release the eyes, release your arms, release your legs very slowly. Very slowly releasing the legs. And stay in Tadasana. You can go into Shavasana if you like. I'm going to stand. It helps us to focus the movement is about eight seconds seconds on each side. Or could be more. Or less. But what is comfortable that you need to position a um, duration that you can do? You find that this pause, move, uh, the pause in the uh, from asanas to asanas is very important to. Uh, in order to optimize the, the poses that you have done. So, see the difference in this asana. What I did was I stopped from one to the next. I get out of the position. And the, between the second and third, I just continue. So you feel that difference in the, how it's done and see how, uh, what, helps you, what helps to make you feel the effects of the asanas. Okay, that was bhavasana. What's really nice to concentrate and also strengthen your, your well-being, your muscles, your entire nervous system. Let's do the next pose. The next pose is another standing pose. We're going to go to the left and to the right side. Now, this pose is called Garudasana. Garudasana is a bird, you know, like the Indonesian airline is Garuda, the bird. So, like, we're going to the left side first. Let's see. First, you stand in this position, inhaling. Okay, give strength to the arms. It's really very makes the arms, the limbs strong. You can feel after some time, you 
you feel tired. <laughs> so you want to keep the strong arms up in the shoulder level. You see holding it in this position can be very straining. Now direct yourself, turn your head to the left side, turn the left leg to the left side too. So you're positioning to look, to take off to the left. Okay. Then you're going to balance on your left leg. Okay, get ready to balance, go on your right toes. Then don't lock the knee of the left and then lifting the left, uh, the right leg up. You're lifting, lifting. You're not going so much forward. Try to keep straight. Lifting, lifting. In such a way that you feel this um, strength, isometric tension in, the, in your thigh, in your bum, probably. And focusing on one point in front of you, going beyond like the bird flying. And slowly come out of the post. Turning your neck, your arms release, your legs. Just feel the difference. Even the neck is being uh, tense because it's a very strong pose. And even your breath. Just release. And the next breath, open your eyes, we do the, the other side, the right side. So again, arms, keep the arms straight, turn the head to the right, the right foot to the right side, and get ready to balance on the right leg, taking the left foot off the floor. So the left foot is slightly at an angle, slightly bent, trying to reach the left arm, but it's not possible. I've got dodgy leg, right side, so I find it trying to do it on the right, balancing. But anyhow, it's uh, quite fine to have uneven balance on the left and the right leg. Giving strength to the arms, you see yourself getting stronger, focusing on your fingertips. And slowly out of the force of the pose. Feel left and right side. These asana are mostly asymmetric contraction, so you strengthen the nerves, strengthen the muscles as well. It can be very, you find you're building muscles uh, in this pose. You're actually distributing the weight in Belize evenly. So in a way, it may work on excess areas where you need to lose. Well, let's do again. Um, to the left side. Left leg, left foot. And take off, lift off the right. Slowly release. Generally, it's about thirty seconds one side, but you can do less if you if you have to. That's not a problem. Again, now the other side, the right side. Strength to the arms. You find the entire body, your core muscles, also engaging in this pose for sure. The entire fascia is engaged in this pose. All movements engages the fascia all the time. The structure that 
wraps us and closes us, every tissue organ in the body. And so we come out of the pose. It looks simple, but it is quite powerful. Like the bird flying in the sky. We'll do again the next round. allow this pause to harmonize the breath as well. Left side, left foot, turn to the left, arms straight. Do not allow your arms to be lazy. It looks very nice pose, you know, like you so you're flying somewhere, but really all the muscles are engaged and concentration is there, focus, in order not to hit the tree <laughs> while you're flying. So, you find the muscles get, you feel it in the muscles, in the parts where you need to feel. So you may feel differently from another person, depending what your structure is, what is needed, where it is needed. To the right side, right foot, looking right, arms up, arms at shoulder levels, left leg up. and slowly come out the pose. Difference, your entire body. We're gonna do last one. There are four rounds. Of course, you can do less rounds than that, as you need it. I'm gonna do four rounds just to I want you to understand how it feels. This asana is actually very, very powerful to distribute your weight evenly, to give strength to your arms, your legs, your mind, your body, and also relieve a lot of nerves, tension, because it's squeezing. And then the after pose in Shavasana is useful. We'll go into that after this. And slowly out the pose. Let me shake a little bit if you want. The shaking is actually very nice. Right side. Don't be lazy, arms up. Just slip one last round. Last part. Lift the left leg up. And slowly out of the pose. Shake it out. I'm going to ask you to come down and go into Shavasana because you really need to feel the effects of these asanas that we have done. You've done three and uh, before you do any further asanas, go into Shavasana. Just 
feel the difference, the effects of the standing asanas. Despite standing, they're very powerful in the nervous system. Improves the overall flow of the prana, the chi in the body. Strengthen the muscles and tissues. You may finish up with massage if this is the last asana that you're doing. Let's roll to one side, it could be to your right side. You need to come to the sitting position. Now, it's really a very nice uh, poses to balance the mind and body. You can see all of them are balancing poses. There's three, in fact, four. There, were, there was one that I did with the, just with one leg. Um, just, um, just an introduction to that short uh, po- uh, uh, balance. Anyhow, the three, the four asanas, they are very useful for your mind and body. And Shavasana will complete the entire the, the practice. Of course, with massage and shavasan. Um, I hope you will try them, and you can also include the other asanas uh, to make maybe five, six asanas each time that you practice. Or even if you're practicing just the standing asanas, uh, they are also very useful. See you at the next session. Namaskar. <laughs>